Welcome to DigiGen, where I will take you on a tour of the genealogy databases available through the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. My name is Rhonda Hoffman, and I'm the genealogy specialist in the Grobner Room at the Central Library in downtown Buffalo. The Grobner Room is the special collections department, which carries genealogy, local history, maps, music scores, and rare books. The databases that I'll cover today are Heritage Quest Online, Ancestry Library Edition, American Ancestors, Sanborn Maps of New York, Hein Online, and Family Search. To access the library's databases, go to the library website www.buffalolib.org and then click Research and Resources. Then click Databases A to Z. If you're using the databases from home, you'll need to put in your valid Buffalo and Erie County Public Library card number in the box at the top, then select Genealogy. Then select the database of interest. Some of the databases aren't available from home. Read the database descriptions to find out where you can use them. The first stop on our tour is Heritage Quest Online. Heritage Quest is available at every Buffalo and Erie County Public Library location and from home with a valid Buffalo and Erie County Public Library card. Heritage Quest is an excellent place to start for beginning genealogists, but it also has tools for intermediate and advanced genealogists. The most powerful data set in Heritage Quest are its census records. Heritage Quest has U.S. federal census records from 1790 through 1940. Canadian censuses are available from 1861 through 1921, every 10 years. There are also Native American censuses, mortality schedules, and agricultural and industrial census schedules. Censuses from 1850 forward include excellent information about families. Everyone living in a household is named, and for this year, 1930, the relationship to the head of the household is stated. Here we have Stephen Hoffman and his wife Agnes and children Mamie, Felix, Martha, Daniel, and Jerome. The family lived at 29 Pangolin Street. They own the house that they're living in, which has the value of $1,800 in that time. Their gender, race, and ages are recorded. This column lists the age at Agnes and Stephen's first marriage. So Stephen was married at 34 and Agnes at 26. Birthplaces of the individual and their parents are listed by either country or state if they were born in the U.S. Stephen immigrated in 1880 and was naturalized by 1930 which means he became an American citizen by 1930. Profession and industry or business of employment is recorded. Daniel and Jerome faced unemployment during the Great Depression. Felix was a World War I veteran. Heritage Quest has thousands of full text books, including city directories. City directories are very similar to telephone books. Here's an entry for the Hoffman family. You can see that they're at 29 North Pangolin Street and that it lists both Stephen and Agnes. I clicked on the image to show the image of the city directory page. Addresses and later telephone numbers were published. Spouses' names are in some, some directories. Usually the head of household was listed and the spouse's name was in parentheses. Or if a woman was a widow, you might see um, that she, the word, uh, the spelling of W-I-D for widow and then the first name of her deceased husband. Profession and sometimes the name of the employer are included. There are also many local and family histories in Heritage Quest. To search for a family's surname, input the surname in the subject field with the word family. So here we see green family. 
This entry for Henry Lewis Green includes important family details, such as his parents' names, his grandfather's name, his wife's name, and even his in-laws' names. Also included are his place of birth, Jordan, in Onondaga County, New York, and other places lived, such as Stevens Point, Portage County, Wisconsin, and Illinois. His education details are given. Stevens Point, Wisconsin for primary school, Markham's Academy in Milwaukee, and the State University of uh, Wisconsin at Madison. Oftentimes, the local history books in Heritage Quest transcribe vital data, such as what we see here, death dates of local pioneers. Heritage Quest includes an obituary index. Most of the obituaries included were published before 1924. To search, I recommend just putting in a name and a city. This is a typical entry. The deceased is Edward Connolly, who lived in Brooklyn, and his obituary was published on the 31st of January, 1917, in the Buffalo Inquirer. Several Western New York newspapers are indexed. The obituary also lists his parents' and siblings' names. Friedman's bank records are in Heritage Quest, and they are useful to African-American genealogy. The bank was established to assist the formerly enslaved and African-American soldiers, but some Caucasians had accounts too. Account holders were required to provide very detailed information about themselves in order to join. Details that may be learned include the date of the application, employer's name, the name of the plantation that they were on when they were enslaved, age, a physical description, the names of family members, the place of birth, the place of residence, occupation, and the names of children and brothers and sisters. This is a register for John Green. John was born in Fairfield County, South Carolina, and was living in Charleston when he joined the bank. He was a soldier in the United States Colored Troops and the 135th Regiment, Company F. His mother's name was Tina, and he had a sister named Maria. His family lived in Louisiana. His father's name was Claiborne. This record links Mr. Green to his enslaved life. The slaveholder, Henry Elliott, is recorded, as well as Mr. Green's last residence while enslaved, which was Charleston. Green was a laborer, and he had a distinguishing mark at the corner of his right eye. U.S. Revolutionary War pension applications are available in Heritage Quest. To receive a military pension file, a soldier had to prove his military service. Pensioners provide details of their service, including enlistment and discharge information, details on military service units fought with, and details of rank and military engagements. There will also usually be details about the soldier's life, such as birth date, and place and locations lived since military service. Affidavits of witnesses to military service were all, all, often included. As long as they met certain criteria, spouses and other immediate family members could obtain the pension file after the veteran passed away. Family members applying had to prove their relationship to the deceased veteran as well as the veteran's military service to obtain the pension. To prove their relationship, Bible records, marriage or birth records, and affidavits of witnesses to marriages were often included. This is an example from a widow's pension. The soldier's name is Nathaniel Fairchild and his wife's name was Elizabeth. They lived in Williamsville and Lancaster, New York. This incredible file offers an affidavit of two of the Fairchild's granddaughters. The fair child's children are named and their dates of birth recorded. It also mentions other living grandchildren and that all of their children were deceased when the pension was applied for. Next on the tour is Ancestry Library Edition. It's almost the same as Ancestry.com and includes billions of records from all over the world. Ancestry Library Edition includes the same U.S. Census records and the same U.S. city directories as in Heritage Quest Online. 
Ancestry provides access to New York State censuses, which were taken in addition to the federal censuses. New York State censuses are very similar to federal census records, but different questions may be asked. The 1855 through 1875 New York State censuses offer specific counties of birth if the individual was born in New York State. Passenger lists is one of the large record sets that is in Ancestry. Numerous U.S. incoming lists, Canadian incoming lists, and some foreign outgoing lists are accessible. Depending on the time frame, passenger lists can provide excellent information such as the last place of foreign residence, nearest relative in the country from which they came, place of birth, and final destination. In this example, Emmanuel Russo lived in Borgetta, Palermo, Italy, and his nearest relative was his father, Giuseppe Russo, of the same location, and his final destination was Meadville, Pennsylvania. Indexes to New York State births, deaths, and marriages are searchable in Ancestry. Certain locations are not covered in the New York State Vital Records Index, such as New York City, which has separate indexes. The cities of Buffalo, Albany, and Yonkers were not included for a number of the early years in this index. These indexes will provide the name, date of event, location of event, and the state certificate number. The marriage index provides the spouse's name. With this information, the certificate could be ordered through the state vital records office or the city or town where the event took place. You should note that the local certificate number is different than the state certificate number. Ancestry has a great yearbook collection dating from 1900 to 1999. The database doesn't include every yearbook from this collection, but it still has a good selection. Ancestry has billions of records for all over the world, but the heaviest content is for North America and Europe. Ancestry has about every type of genealogical document that you can think of, but it doesn't include everything for every location. Use the Explore by Location section to browse the records available. Here's an example of some of the records and indexes available for New York State. Our next stop is American Ancestors, which is the database collection of the New England Historic Genealogical Society. Most of its content pertains to New York and New England, but other states are represented. This database is available for use in the Grosvenor Room only through the Buffalo Neary County Public Library. But if you are a member of this society, this is something that you could access from home. And if you're not from the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library area, check with your local library to see if they have access. This is the main database page where you can see the types of records offered. There are almost 500 databases. A great resource included are some full-text genealogy periodicals. Some of the major periodicals included are the New York Genealogical and Biographical Record, the New England Historical and Genealogical Register, Pennsylvania Magazine, the American Genealogist, and others. The periodicals can be keyword searched or browsed page by page. So the New England Historic Genealogical Society published many authoritative genealogies, many of which are in the database. This is an entry from Great Migration, Immigrants to New England from 1634 to 1635. This essay about Thomas Stanton tells us that he arrived in the U.S. in 1635, first lived in Cambridge and later in Hartford, and then Stonington, Connecticut. Stanton was a Native American interpreter. He had a trading house where he traded with Native Americans, and he was also a member of Stonington Church. His education and many accomplishments are listed here. The entry also provides information about his land transactions, including descriptions of his land. Birth, death, and marriage information is given about him and his family. 
You will find some very unique content in American Ancestors, too, such as engraved family registers by Richard Brunton, who was born in England in 1749, that's the image to the left, and stitching samplers made by young girls when being educated, which is the image to the right. You can see that a lot of family information was sometimes stitched. Next, we'll tour Sanborn Maps of New York. Sanborn Maps of New York is available at every Buffalo and Erie County Public Library location and available from home with a Buffalo and Erie County Public Library card. The maps in this database are for New York State only. The dates vary by town, but in general, the coverage is from 1867 and maybe up to 1970. Buffaloes cover from 1867 up to 1970, and many other Erie County towns are in this database. Sanborn maps are very detailed property maps. The Sanborn company drew the maps and sold them to fire insurance companies so that they could decide their premiums. Only They only cover built up areas of towns. The database is very simple to use. Simply select Browse and Explore. Then select the location and date range of interest. Large cities will have multiple volumes. Each volume will have an index sheet, which lists street addresses and names some businesses and public buildings. Once at the index sheet, look alphabetically for the street name. Then look for the appropriate street number range. If there is an asterisk beside the number range, it means that it is only one side of the street. Then look for the sheet number. This is the number that you'll need to find the address. Here's an example of a map. If we zoom in, you can see that many of the properties are listed with the letter D, which means domicile or home. Larger businesses and public buildings like churches are usually named. In this example, a very detailed layout of the Buffalo Linseed Oil Works was drawn. You can see where the different departments are in here. So if you knew what your ancestor did for a particular business, you could see right where they worked. I already mentioned that D stands for domicile for when, when that's on the buildings. Other common noca notations for building uses are SAL for saloon, S for store, and this image also shows concert halls and tenements. Next, we'll cover Hein Online, which is a legal database which has some genealogical applications. Hein Online is available in library only at every Buffalo and Erie County Public Library location. Keep in mind that it includes some Grosvenor Room books. The home screen is where you can search and also see the database names. A good way to search the database is to use a within search. If you're searching for a name, put the first name, then the letter W followed by a slash, then the number of words you would like the search terms to be within one another. So here, David W. 3 Laub will bring back results with David and Laub within three words of each other. You could also add in geographic locations and other keywords by using the Boolean AND search. Mr. Lobb was from Buffalo and his family owned a tannery business. This entry from Buffalo Magazine provides great family history details. So here it says his great grandfather came up the Erie Canal about 1840 and went into the lumber business in Armour near the village of Hamburg. He used to haul wagon loads of lumber into Buffalo and the bark that scraped off the lumber he peddled to the tanneries, which used it as a dye. The tanneries well knew that he wasn't going to haul the bark back to armor, so they paid him about what they felt like paying for it. It didn't take long for this early day Laub to figure that out that the tannery business is where he ought to cast his lot. The U.S. serial set is one of the Hein Online's components. The serial set includes congressional publications printed by the Order of Congress, including House and Senate journals and reports, 
executive branch publications, and many other documents such as committee reports on public and private legislation. The First Amendment guarantees the right to petition the government for, for the redress of grievances, and many of our ancestors used this right, which was a last-ditch effort for them and their plight to get something done via the government. Genealogical information included may be very detailed or may simply be another detail discovered about an ancestor's life. If an entry is found, original handwritten documentation by an ancestor, including more detail, may be available through the National Archives. One thing you may find in the serial set is immigration and deportation information. A bill was sponsored to let a man named Franz Eugene Laub who was threatened with deportation, stay in the U.S. Mr. Laub included much personal information about himself in his petition process, such as when and where he was born, his parents' names and where they were born, his schooling, and where and when he came to the U.S. His wife's name and her former husband was named, her maiden name was listed, and information about his stepdaughters is also included. Also in the file is information about his arrest and trial information, overseas travel, employment, and that he was a detained as an enemy alien during World War II and at what camps he was detained. A reason why many people may be in the serial set is that their property was damaged in relation to the U.S. government, such as in times of war. This is an example from when Buffalo was burned in the War of 1812. Other reasons your ancestors may have petitioned the government are for a military pension increase, payment owed by the government, patent extensions, issues related to federal land, and towns may have petitioned the government for some reason. For example, before the Civil War, many towns petitioned to end slavery. There are some court case reports in Hein Online which may include your ancestor. This is from a work called Reports of Cases Decided in the Sup Superior Court of Buffalo since its organization in April 1854 down to December 1875. The court case featured here is Palmer v. Palmer from June of 1865, a divorce appeal. The summary provides the month and year of marriage, which was before vital events were recorded in New York State, and how long the couple lived together. In their prior trial, the wife was granted $200 a month in support from her husband, and their daughter was to stay with the mother and their son with the father. This is important family detail that you likely wouldn't learn someplace else. A great find in this database was a collection of testimonies of Civil War Union prisoners. William Sartwell of North Troy, Vermont, testified that it was three days from the time I was captured until I received the first rations. Two spoonfuls of beans and a piece of cornbread about two inches square our haversacks, canteens, blankets, and most of our good overcoats had been taken away from us. We were four days on the march to Danville and had no rations issued to us on the way. Hein Online includes a free U.S. slavery collection. One of the titles in the collection is Judicial Cases Concerning American Slavery and the Negro. A December 1843 case in Iridell County, North Carolina, lists the details that a slaveholder named Sarah Lofton sold a group of enslaved persons named Fan and her children were Ham and Joe. The last stop on the tour is Family Search. Family Search is the genealogy website of the Mormon Church. Family Search is a free website that can be used by everyone from home but select content has to be viewed at specific locations, such as family history centers, which are small research libraries, often in local Mormon churches. And some records are available for viewing at Family Search affiliate libraries, and the Grosvenor Room is an affiliate. 
it's necessary to set up a free account to use FamilySearch. FamilySearch is a massive database. FamilySearch has microfilmed and digitized millions of genealogy records from all over the world. It's possible to search many databases in FamilySearch, but not all records have been digitized or are keyword searchable. Some records you need to browse page by page. A good way to find online records for a particular location is to use the online catalog. To see what's available for a location, perform a place name search for the location. Good locations to search for are city, town, and county names. To view only online records, you can select online. In your results, select the category of interest and click the title. The title here is Alien Declarations 1839 to 1895. The title's catalog record will display. Scroll to the Film Notes section and then look at the format of the records. There will be a camera if the records have been digitized. If there is a key by the camera, it means the records cannot be viewed from home. Click the camera and it will tell you where you can view the record set. This record set is viewable at Family History Centers and Family Search Library Affiliates. That concludes our tour of the library's genealogy databases. I hope they help you solve your family history puzzle. Thank you for joining us.